Happy holidays, D2 Nation. I'm your co-host, Wayne Cavati, and it is our last show before the Christmas break. Speaking of Christmas breaks, Ferris State got their break off to a good start, dominating its way to the first D2 football championship in its program's history. Shameless plug, my last D2 football power 10 rankings of the season are up at NCAA.com. And it's crazy, Bethany, because our first episode was my first preseason D2 football power 10 rankings way back in August. And before I introduce you, I want to wish you a happy anniversary because this is our 20th episode. And I got to tell you, I couldn't be more grateful that you've stuck along for the ride. And I also, and D2 Nation should join me, want to wish you a happy belated birthday. So we hope you enjoyed your day and welcome back, partner. Thanks. Wow, 20 episodes. That's crazy. Um, well, let's get on with episode 20. We're going a little different direction this week. Last week, we had Jared Bernhardt on, a student athlete that went from D1 to D2 and found success. But this week, we turn our attention to former Northwest Missouri State Bearcat Ryan Hawkins, who found legendary success at Division II and is now enjoying similar success at D1 Creighton. So, Ryan, welcome to the nation. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch you so far. And I I'm not joking. Bethany and I text back and forth every game you play. We're, we're, we're watching you. You're doing great. We get excited. Uh, you know, last week we saw John Rothstein tweet out uh, your name and, you know, it's, it's getting exciting to watch what you're doing. But before we get into what's going on at Creighton, let's go back to your D2 days. Let's you, you had that solid high school career. Um, and as you're showing now, you had the skills to play at any collegiate level. What was the recruiting process originally like for you? And how did you wind up at Northwest Missouri State? Uh, so I have a little bit different story. I was actually committed to Wayne State out of high school. Um, and Wayne State uh, went a different direction with their head coach in uh, May, right before I was getting ready to go to school there. Uh, didn't love the fit and the situation for me up there. And I decided to kind of take a leap of faith at the end of July and decommit and uh, stopped in Maryville on my way home from a vacation in the middle of August and had a great talk with Coach McCollum and called him on the car ride home and told him I wanted to be a Bearcat and about three days later moved into my freshman dorm down in Maryville and uh, no regrets ever since. It's been an awesome ride, awesome experience down there in Maryville and I'm very thankful for everything that Northwest did for me. That's crazy. That, I, that, that is an awesome little story of, of how you wound up there. I had no idea. It was just really interesting because Wayne State was really my only offer out of high school besides uh, two NAIA schools. Um, so to kind of go from, I mean, I kind of felt like I was a little overlooked uh, to having a lot of success at the D2 level. It was a pretty, pretty awesome experience. So while we're talking about high school, I do want to point out, and I think I may just know this from my time covering you in the MIAA, but pretty cool story. I think viewers would love to know that you played six sports in high school. <laughs> that was a few, yeah, but it was a lot of fun. Um, wasn't really worried about getting college offers or anything, more living in the moment and taking advantage of a high school experience where you get to you know, get to play a lot of different sports with a lot of different friends. So name them real quick, basketball, football? Uh, football and cross country in the fall, basketball in the winter, baseball and soccer, or uh, track and soccer in the spring, and then baseball in the summer. Wow. That is ridiculous. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So you're registered on the 2017 national championship team and then become a big part of back-to-back -back national championship squads. So let's talk about Coach McCollum and not only what he's done for the program, but what he's done for you as a player. Uh, I think my transition from senior year of high school to freshman year of college, uh, I owe him and both Coach Schneider and Coach Meyer a uh, huge debt of gratitude. Um, just the way they took me under their wing and I had to transform the way I played basketball in high school. Uh, I was more of a back to the basket, true big. And uh, obviously the college basketball had shifted to a lot of, you know, perimeter play with pick and pop. And um, I just felt like the offense that Coach McCollum had down there uh, kind of fit into my skill set that I developed freshman year watching Coach Schneider play um, and working with Coach Meyer every day in practice. I think just the combination of those three uh, for, uh, provided me the platform and kind of the foundation uh, for my skills to grow from that redshirt year. And, and that's kind of the blueprint at Northwest, right? Like, I remember I was in um, Indiana watching the 2019 championship and, and you were kind of that X factor player, right? Like the, the kind of the Horace Grant to, 
Joey Buckets and, and Trevor Hudgens, like the Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. And you were just there getting the rebounds, doing the defensive work. And then 2020, boom, you, you blew up, right? And you, you and Trevor were arguably the best two players in D2. Is that kind of the way that Coach Mac and, and Northwest goes? It's like, like look, we're going to make you a star. Just trust it in the program. Uh, I think it's not that at all. I think it's buy into the program and what the program wants. Um, and you can see it now this year, especially. Uh, it's different guys stepping up every game. You know, obviously Trevor's an amazing player, but he's surrounded by a bunch of guys down there that make him better every single day in practice and in the games. Um, and it's the next man up, you know. Uh, out of high school, I would have had no idea the amount of success I'd be able to have at that school. Um, but just the way that the culture instills it in you to step up when you get your chance and put in your work uh, before you have your chance, essentially make everybody better during practice and give everyone the best look you can to make you know, those guys that are playing uh, the best possible players that they can be. Uh, I think the way that that culture is set up down there allows that next person to just walk right into that role. Um, and it's going to be somebody different every single game, uh, depending on you know a defensive matchup or whatever it's going to be. Uh, but I think just the way that Coach McCollum and his continued success shows that it works. We've had, you mentioned Trevor, we've had him on the show and the guys from small college basketball on the show gushing just about how great he is. But from someone that got to play alongside him, what makes Trevor Hudgens the best player in Division II basketball? His poise, without a doubt. Trevor's the same person, whether or not his shots are going in or not. You know, if he's having a rough night offensively or if he's having a great night offensively. Uh, he's never too high on himself and never too low on himself either. Uh, and with that, you know, comes his pace of play. He controls the game so well offensively. And I feel like he's a very underrated defensive player too. Um, where, I mean, that backcourt with Trevor and Diego is just nasty. Um, from a, a defensive end too, those two get after it and guard the ball. Um, and so I think just his poise uh, keeps him – uh, probably the best player in D2 history, in my opinion. Yeah, I, th I think you hit it on the head. Like, you watched that game against Northern State last year where your season's on the line. Are any of you guys surprised when he hits those shots? I mean, you talk about his poise. You can just see. I mean, he's just like, whatever. I, I just made that. But are, is anybody else shocked? No, you're never surprised when Trevor does something like that just because he's the same person every single day. You know, he'll hit something like that in practice and – You'll never see it on his face. You'll never see it in his reaction like, oh, my gosh, I just did that. It's, it's just Trevor's just another day for him. Remember when we had him on the show, he said he got it from his mom, his, his poise, that it, it was his mom's stoic face growing up that he, that he took it from. Um, let's get back to you. Um, let's talk a little bit about this jump to D1 now. You're, you're doing um, – it's amazing how well you're doing, and Creighton's doing really well. Um, what was that process like getting to Creighton? Were there other options and how hard was it to, to, to leave Northwest? Uh, leaving Northwest was by far the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Um, but I think for a 20 something year old to have that option, um, shows that, you know, if you happen to pick where you want to go play basketball, you lived a pretty good life. So very thankful for that. Uh, but it was definitely, you know, it was a hard decision for me, um, spending five years in Maryville and, you know, called it home and all my friends were there. I built a lot of relationships with the faculty at Northwest and the, you know, the community of Maryville. Um, but, you know, it was tough and it was tough to decide where I wanted to go play at next. Um, but I knew this was probably going to be my last year of playing basketball. So I wanted something different and just something unique for me. Um, and so I had to make a selfish decision to leave. And I had, you know, my phone that, that Monday was uh, blowing up. I had a lot of, a lot of different calls from a lot of different schools. Um, uh, but ultimately, Creighton provided a great place for me to have a big impact as far as bringing leadership and experience to a young team uh, that didn't have a lot of experience or, uh, honestly, senior leadership returning. Uh, so it was just a really great fit for me personally and basketball-wise, and I've been very happy with it ever since. And now, like we said, here you are. The Blue Jays have two wins against top 25 opponents in the last 10 days. John Rothstein is tweeting about you and you're leading the team and scoring and rebounding. What do you think has made the transition look so easy? I think that freshman year at Northwest and uh, you know, the countless hours spent with Coach Schneider and Coach McCollum, uh, just really learning the game of basketball without having, like, I didn't sit down and, like, make a goal to learn the game. I just kind of soaked it all in and just learned from those two. Um, I feel like Coach Schneider is very underrated with his uh, ability to work with shooters and their footwork. Um, 
because honestly your shots built from the ground up so if your feet aren't set and uh, you don't do the same thing every single shot it's not going to be the same and so having those two and coach Meyer that red shirt year was uh big for me to develop habits that I feel like I still uh, continue to this day uh, and to have that consistency and uh, have that program and that culture instilled in me I feel like making sure you do the same thing every single day that you learned at the D2 level uh, allows for that transition. Something my dad said the other day, because uh, Wayne and I talk a lot about you, but I think my dad and I are may maybe a close second for text exchanges. But he was like, yeah, I mean, besides uh, your obvious athleticism, like he really commended your basketball IQ. He was like, you know, he's just a, such a smart player. Uh, when do you think that that kind of really clicked for you? Was there ever a moment where you're like, wow, the game's starting to make a lot of sense? I think that sophomore year, um, I feel like I learned a lot from Joey Buckets. Uh, I feel like a lot of people don't even know his real last name, which is Wittis. Uh, but uh, just being able to learn from Joey, because no offense, Joey, but he wasn't the most athletic individual, even at the Division II level, but he was still one of the best players in the nation because of his understanding and IQ for the game. And so I think soaking it in from him and Coach Schneider, who's a little more athletic than Joey, but not a whole lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like being able to soak in a lot of information from those two uh, just really made the game calm down in my mind and allowed me to play uh, without having to think. You just react. And I feel like that's when you play better is when you play loose and play free. Yeah, you could tell, too. You were like, I, I like watching those type of plays on the court. You, you were just always in the right spot, you yeah. know, and always made the right play and always made the smart pass. It was, it was just always fun to, to watch you in that offense and defense just, just gel with everybody else on the floor. Yeah, and it's really fun at the Division One level, too. Uh, I've learned so much from Coach McDermott and his entire coaching staff because uh, it's a completely different offense, completely different tempo than what I'm used to. Um, and so working with them in the summer, I had those eight weeks to try and learn a new offense and be a leader for a group where we're all new and don't understand everything yet. Um, that was a really big challenge uh, as far as like a personal level and being a leader in that aspect. Um, but I feel like the whole coaching staff and Coach McDermott at Creighton have made uh, that change for me really easy and uh, allowed me to excel in that role. Are you a little surprised with how quickly it's it's all coming together with the, not just you, but with the team? I mean, like I, like we said, big wins, you know, out to a great start. Yeah, uh, it's a big surprise. Um, but I think the biggest surprise for me uh, is the consistency we're starting to find. Uh, it hasn't quite showed up in games yet being the consistent team that we need to be. But I feel like for how young we are, we're a pretty consistent group in practice, which I think is a, a great step in the right direction for us. Having now experienced basketball at two different levels, I know it's been kind of short so far at the Division One level, but what sticks out to you the most about D2 and what do you miss the most about D2? Uh, the family feel that uh, Maryville and Northwest had at the Division Two level. Um, it's hard to explain the culture and the environment up there, not only in the basketball program, but the entire athletic department. Um, that's probably the thing I miss the most about it is that personal connection that you have with each fan. Uh, feels like when you're in Bearcat Arena, you knew every single person that was in that building. And that's just such a homey feeling to have. Yeah. I, I uh, confess he had like a, uh, a line after every game of kids wanting to come talk to him. <laughs> that's awesome. That's good to be good that, that figure. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, Ryan, I know Bethany reached out and asked you to be on the show, but I'm not sure if she told you that there's one more part of the show left, and that is the D2 Nation hot seat. And just because you're D1 now, you don't get to escape. So <laughs> if you're ready, these are just some fun, quick questions to, to close out the show. Bethany, get them started. Yeah, sorry, Ryan, forgot to mention that part, but uh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> who's your favorite basketball team and player? Uh, Northwest Missouri State and Wesley Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best answer we've had yet. Uh, what is the best sports movie of all time? You're going to get me with that one. I'm probably going to say Glory Road just because I'm a basketball nut, but I feel like Miracle is up there for sure. Oh, yeah. No Hoosiers? It's a great movie, but it's it's not it's not the best movie of all time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you listen to to get you pumped up before a game? And we've had some pretty crazy answers here, so be careful because everyone will hear this. <laughs> uh, I'm a big country guy. I listened to some country music beforehand. Um, 
but I do like Rod Wave a lot and Polo G Bo. So a little bit of both. Okay. You're, you're stranded on a deserted island and, and you have your food and water, so you don't have to worry about that. What two other items are you taking with you? I bring my boat. Sounds like a great plan. <laughs> uh, if I can't do that, probably going to bring a pillow so I can get a good night's sleep. Um, and probably an umbrella so I don't get you know too much sun. <laughs> Strategic. You can tell he's got the IQ. <laughs> Pick the boat. Uh, you know, I think you've had a few Blake days with Coach McDermott's son, uh, my favorite college player of all time, actually, Doug. What is he like? Uh, unreal to be around. So humble, great personality, um, and a hard worker. A lot of people don't get to see that side of him, but you know, he's in that gym in the summer working out uh, in the weight room lifting. Um, but yeah, you know, he was, he was a lot of fun to relax with out by the lake and just have a lot of fun. Um, really calm. Loves to talk about golf. We get along great. Last question. You have the choice of being able to be invisible or superpower of being able to fly. Which do you choose? I'd rather be able to fly. Think about all the places you could go see. Like, you, know, you don't have to climb a mountain. You can just fly up to the top of it and get the view. Which I get part of the beauty of it is the struggle to get to the top. But some things in life shouldn't be hard. Maybe, you know, flying makes that a little easier. Well, you see what we did there, Ryan, is, is that is a popular interview question these days for jobs. And, and the answer is to fly because fly shows leadership, whereas being invisible shows that you kind of sink into the background. So you, you're, you're, you're great on the basketball court. And you're going to be great in job interviews when <laughs> at the next level. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I can get any more eligibility, so probably will have to find a job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 we might see him playing some more basketball off this year because I hope so. I hope so. Lately, so. <laughs> well, Ryan, we're going to let you get back to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have a great holiday. And, and thanks again for taking the time with us. And, and remember, D2 Nation, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and anywhere else you want to listen to something. Give us a follow. Have a happy holiday. And we'll see you next week on the D2 Nation. <laughs>